Hello, Internet. This is Kelly from Nice Lady Productions. I'm so grateful you're joining me for this review of the Takina Vista Prime lenses. This review is very in-depth. I've included a lot of footage all shot with a RED camera. RED cameras do not have sharpening built into the cameras as other manufacturers do, so I want you to keep that in mind when you're watching it. I've added no sharpening in post. I've only corrected the images for exposure. There's no LUTs or anything else added to the image, no vignetting, so that you can really gauge the quality of these lenses and the image they produce. And I've even included footage of some very important models. I was fortunate enough to shoot an entire short film with these lenses. So if you're looking for additional footage, definitely click the link in the bio of this video and watch our film, Forgetting Me. The entire film was shot on the Vista Primes, except for the opening overhead crane shot that was captured on a pre-production Takina 11 to 20 T 2.9 at T 2.9. This is a really impressive lens that is being released in the fall of 2018. The rest of the film was shot on the Vista Primes at between T 1.5 and T 2.2, which is a real testament to how sharp these lenses are wide open because there's no way I would have shot a short film at T 1.5 on some other lenses out there. The Takina Vista Primes are beautiful metal housed cinema lenses. Unlike the Rokinon Zine lenses, the Canon Cine lenses, the Sigma Cine lenses, and the Zeiss CP2 lenses, the Takina Vista Primes are the only ones of that group that are purpose built cinema lenses that cover a full frame sensor up to 8K. They come in 18, 25, 35, 50, and 85 focal lengths. They're all exactly the same size, except for the 18 millimeter, which is a little bit longer. Gearing on the lenses is nice and smooth from the iris adjustment to the focus adjustment. Goldilocks would be happy with these lenses. The mechanics on the focus throw are not too tight or too loose. It's nice having a cinema lens that produces such a smooth iris pull. Focus and iris markings for the first AC are in yellow. You flip the lens around and the focus and iris markings for the camera operator are in white. Each lens has a built-in lens mount for attaching to rails. A really nice and unique feature about these lenses that stands apart from the competition is that these lenses have swappable mounts. And this is huge for rental houses, and also for people that want to buy one set of lenses and be able to use them on multiple cameras. I don't think that there is a perfect lens for every situation out there, but I think the Takina Vista Primes come 98% close. And the only 2% holding them back really is their size and weight. For someone who is using a small camera rig, using a steady camera, using a gimbal, you might run into problems using these lenses because they could be heavier than your camera and they are bigger than other lenses, but that's because they are able to cover that higher resolution sensor size. Okay, let's start looking at some of the footage from these lenses. Just a reminder that all of this footage was captured on a RED camera with no sharpening added in post. Let's start by looking at focal lengths. 25 millimeter, probably my favorite lens of this set. What I love about these lenses is they have character and I think that you can see that even in the footage. And you can just see how buttery smooth the focus pull is. This is a great example of how well these lenses perform. Even in a telephoto, you can see here on the apples, there's just no focus breathing. We're gonna run through two different sharpness tests. I know a lot of you like to see focus charts, so let's look at some focus charts. So if you're using these lenses on say a Sony camera that is really sharp to start with, you can imagine how these lenses would perform. They're not too clinical looking, they're not too sharp looking, but yet 
they're fast and sharp in low light. Tried to make sure that all these images were exposed properly. But this 8515, it was not. It was really overexposed to start. So apologies on that. It does look quite soft in the middle and a little bit sharper on the edges, which is interesting, actually. I could slightly be off focus a bit on this 85 test in general. Okay, now let's do another test, which is more my cup of tea, real world. And we can see the lettering on the books to gauge how sharp the lenses are at different apertures. Whenever I see focus tests online, I'm always wondering if the person is actually in focus to start with, you know, because it's pretty easy to not be in focus to start with. Okay, let's look at bokeh. Don't expect the bokeh in this test to be round because the lights I'm filming are not round. These lenses produce really nice buttery bokeh. Now let's take a look at focus breathing. Before we do, I wanna remind you what focus breathing looks like from a stills lens. So here's an example. As I'm pulling focus, the subject is zooming in and out. This is very distracting in video. It basically looks like it's changing the focal length. Now why is the bokeh here more circular? Because I had the lights blurry to start with so that I would end up with circular bokeh. On the Takina Vista Primes, we see a very different effect. No zooming on the bookshelf as I pull focus. Now let's look at some focus breathing tests with some cute models. Now we have to be quiet in this part of the video because my girls are sleeping. But as you can see, as I rack focus between Focus breathing is usually more apparent in telephoto lenses, like an 85. These lenses perform beautifully. Okay, let's take these lenses outdoors and see what we can capture. Many of you will recognize this setting. This is Hatley Castle, which is where X-Men and Deadpool and a bunch of other films were filmed. Just assume I'm probably shooting most of this at between a T11 and T22. This is a great example of how nice these lenses are. The lens flare is beautifully controlled. So I hope you've gleaned some knowledge from all this footage that I've shown you. There's no doubt these are the best lenses. I've ever used for shooting video and I'm just so grateful to have been able to have them and to be able to shoot a short film with them. So that's my full review of the Tequina Vista Primes. If you get a chance to rent these lenses, do it. I don't think you're going to be disappointed. And if you're in the market for buying some cinema lenses, definitely think about these ones. Thanks for hanging out with me. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't, and please leave your comments. I love reading them. See you later.